What is up, everybody? Hello, and welcome into the Thursday night Tim Bip Live. I'm, of course, Perry, the host of This Is My Bourbon Podcast. I'm very happy to see everybody back here tonight. Thank you guys so much uh, for returning for yet another week, um, especially after the, uh, the embarrassing time that was me trying to play video games in front of people. And I, I'd like to make a, a, a formal public apology um, to those of you who endured that and spent your time that you could have been watching somebody successfully playing video games instead, or maybe just drinking whiskey in general. So anyway, happy to see you guys here again. Don, Donnie, Swan, Matt, Brian, Trev, Nick. I think I nailed everybody so far. But cheers to everybody who is here. And uh, tonight we are actually going to be drinking whiskey instead of playing Super Mario and failing miserably. You say embarrassing, I say hilarious, says Brian Brennicky. Well, there were some funny moments. I'm not going to lie. I am not going to lie about that. But at the same time, um, I, f I felt the fool afterwards. But that's okay. We live, we learn, we grow. And I've grown into the man you see before you. Who would much rather drink whiskey with you people and chat about it. Uh, tonight, I'm beginning with my very first bottle of Wild Turkey 101 from 2020. Every other bottle um, that I've found has been uh, 2019, even one 2018. Um, let me tell you, 2020 is not so bad for wild turkey, at at least, at least. Don thought that we'd be seeing a game of Animal Crossing tonight. I'm letting um, the island of Ritzville relax um, for for a little bit. Once I get done, though, um, I'm going to go back and catch me some more fish. Net me some more bugs. And uh, I'm going to call it a night. Call it a night after that. A couple of things to uh, talk about before we uh, move on to the main event. Um, tomorrow's episode of the ISO Sessions will feature our good friends Abby and Elena from Bourbon and Blondes. Um, they've been on the show before. Very funny conversation that I got to have with them. If you've not listened to last week's ISO sessions yet with the hilariously funny comedian Ben Russell, um, Australian American comedian, American Australian. I'm not sure. Um, you need to go and listen to that. Just make sure that, uh, your kids aren't around. Make sure that granny's not around either because, um, there's some words, my friends, some topics of conversation, um, but it was a good time, nonetheless. Nick Foles asks, uh, thoughts on Rhetoric 25? If I had Rhetoric 25? I can't remember which Rhetoric I've had. I think it was the 25th, or 25? Maybe it was the 24. I can't remember. I'd have to, I got a note about it somewhere. But I'll have to go back and look. Uh, Zeb Taylor. Zeb Taylor, I don't think I've ever seen you in the chat before. Welcome in. Uh, cheers for being here. Uh, Clifton said, hey, Perry, oops, three minutes late. I will take it. I'll take it. Trev Wilson, you handsome, handsome devil, you said, Perry, you good looking man. Right back at you, my buddy. Right back at you. Hope the captain's hat is treating you well. Um, also, if you've not listened to yesterday's episode yet, it was the Hostile Swan Takeover episode, which was something in and of itself. I had a great time recording and editing that episode. Um, so please go check that out if you've not done so. Uh, I'm not sure what's going to happen with next week's episode just yet, considering uh, this weekend is Mother's Day. Uh, we'll probably probably relocate our uh, 
or re rearrange what time we record and everything. But that's that's for later. That's for later, not for now. For now, we drink whiskey. And we put a happy face on about it. <laughs> Always happy to drink some bourbon, of course. Also want to um, give a special shout out to our friends of the show, the podcast, whom uh, without this show, or without their show, this show might not exist, uh, as they were a huge encouragement and inspiration for the beginning of uh, This Is My Bourbon podcast, and they celebrated four years of the podcast this week, and uh, it's incredible, absolutely incredible. We've been going for just over half that, and thinking about a year and a half more uh, of doing the show excites me, and I'm very excited for them, and I want to say a huge congratulations uh, to Matt and Will, or Grease and Will, as most of you know him, um, because it was very cool. Congrats, guys. So, cheers to, cheers to the podcast. Mm. 2020 is a good year for for Wild Turkey 101. Splendid year, in fact. All right. So, a couple of things before we get into the main event as well. I keep I keep postponing the main event. Um, I in lieu of super chats, which I do have not I do not have set up uh, on YouTube. Um, I do have. I uh, PayPal or uh, Square slash Venmo, uh, the links to which are in the comments below. Uh, if you'd like to send a question or comment along with a super chat, <laughs> uh, I'll be happy to read it out uh, on air. Um, Nick Foles said, shout out Hardys. Amen to that. Brian Bernicke said, Matt almost made me tear up with his message on Facebook. It was awfully sweet. It was awfully sweet. Made me happy to see as well. Uh, anyway, that's it. Uh, as we transition into the reviews, which are for Elijah Craig Barrel Proof, B520. Come on, computer camera. B520. <laughs> uh, Matt from ADHD Whiskey asked if I had heard about a rare breed barrel proof release date. Um... You got me. You got me, Matt Porter. You got me. Uh, and then we're also going to be reviewing the Heaven Hills Larceny Barrel Proof B520. 122.2 uh, proof on the Larceny. 127.2, I believe, on the Elijah Craig. Yes, label change. Uh, Donnie asks, how did I get B520 already? By the very gracious folks uh, from Heaven Hill. They sent me, um, they sent me both of these, uh, the the full bottle and the sample, um, and I'm very very thankful to them for doing that. Um, oh, I, I, Matt said the rye. Okay, I don't know anything about that yet. I'm just as in the dark um, as everybody else. I. Clifton asks, I th wait, you just, you got a full bottle. I thought just a sample. It was a, a sample of the Larceny, um, but the full bottle was the Elijah Craig Barrel Proof. And yes, um, who was it? Somebody said label change. Oh, uh, Matt, ADHD Whiskey said label change. Yes, they did change up the label a little bit. I'm not sure how I feel about it. I'm not sure how I feel about it. We'll talk about it a little bit more. Robot Scott, welcome in. Good to see you, buddy. Happy to hear you. Have you here? Uh, first super chat goes to Mr. Brian Bernicke as usual. He said, "Super chat, you're the best, Pear Bear." Thank you, Brian Bernicke. Cheers. 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 Um, <laughs> he 
he thought I was pulling out a rare breed rye. I'm sorry. I, w- I was not pulling out a rare breed rye. I have no idea when that product's coming out. Um, I'll try to dig up some information, see what I can find out. Uh, Joseph made a comment about how I can't play with my hair. Well, I got to add on. You're just going to have to wait for the occasional swipe in place, which is being patented right now as we speak uh, in the U.S. Patent Office. Uh, off, office. Um, sample of the Larceny Lucky. Thank you, Clifton. <laughs> also, everybody, say happy birthday to Clifton McDaniel, who's in the chat. We're going to go hang out in his live stream uh, shortly after uh, we are done here. Uh, Dustin Whitaker's here as well, whose birthday is tomorrow. So happy birthday to Dustin as well. It's just like virtual birthday celebrations all over the place. Um, make sure you guys can hear me. Can y'all hear me okay? I apologize. Um, Clifton's drinking some Knob Creek 25th. Real nice. Uh, Trev asks, just kind of confused as to why they felt the need for such a subtle change. The only thing it does is bug me. Um, I don't know why they felt a need for it. I think it looks a little bit cheaper. I think it actually looks more like a first draft uh, than the old label did. I thought the old label looked a little bit more um, pronounced. Sorry, this is an empty bottle of B518. Um, without people coming over, um, I've had to, I've, I've stopped cleaning up as much as I normally do. But the thing is, I've got to clean up really, really soon because it's going to be baby room. So, <laughs> bourbon's going out, baby's coming in, and bourbon's going to the garage. So, could be worse. Could be much worse. Um, Catching up on the chat, Papa Ritter, <clears throat> it's here, Whew. got some bourbon on the way back up on that one, excuse me, sorry, Grand Papa Ritter's here, <laughs> um, so to, I figured to get my palate on, on track, for these, especially since I was just drinking some uh, Turkey 101. Um, I'm gonna have the standard releases uh, of these two products uh, before I get into their barrel proof versions. So I'm gonna start with the uh, Larceny small batch, 92 proof. Just so I can prep myself, prep my palate uh, for it. The baby can keep some bourbon, says Clifton. Maybe Papa Ritter can keep some bourbon with the baby. Now we're thinking. Now we're a team. All right. A little bit of larceny small batch to wet my whistle. Mm. So light and fruity and sugary. And I think that I was, for some reason, um, mentally preparing myself for a barrel proof. And when it didn't turn out to be a barrel proof nose, my brain did a 180 to kind of a little backflip and was like messed up, done messed up. And then I realized it's 92 proof. I still stand by this. I still think that this is a great, inexpensive, weeded bourbon for everyday sipper. 92 proof, 24, 23 bucks a bottle, something like that. Um, a great, great alternative uh, to Maker's Mark. Uh, Clifton asks, I haven't tried standard larceny in forever. How does it hold up? Quite well, quite well. But you've also had some fantastic store picks. I've only had one or two, I think. I love Standard Larceny too. 
I don't think that it would hold up very well in a cocktail. I'll say that much, but I do think that as a as a neat pour, if you're just looking for an easy sipper going out on the back porch or something, um, it, it, it hits all the marks, man. I mean, it doesn't disappoint. I think maybe the only downfall that I would have, and I, I know that we've reviewed this on the show forever ago, um, but I think the finish is just a hair short. Could be a little bit longer. Could be a little bit longer. Um, Joseph said, standard larceny is Lisa Marie's favorite so far. Okay, let's clear my glass out. Clearn is what I said, not clean. Clearn. Clearn the clearn. We're Glenn Clearnin. It's been a long week. <laughs> Anyway, the clarin has been cleaned. I'm getting a headache from that. I gotta stop. Stop this crap. I think that should be enough for review purposes. Saves me about half a bottle for sampling purposes. Dad asks, how was dinner? It's my second cheeseburger of the day. It was pretty good, though. It was, it was good. We went over and had dinner with uh, Lucy's family, with her mom and her mom's boyfriend. That's all that he's talking about. Uh, so 122.2 proof. April 29th, 2020. Uh, it says lab sample for testing purposes only. No commercial value. Um, I think the, that the value is in the commercial. Right off the bat, not to steal a phrase from chat or anything, I'm getting a headache from the hat. I'm not taking this hat off right now. If anything, the hat's going backwards. Mmm, <laughs> cheeseburgers. <laughs> anyway. Initial feelings about the nose. Much more robust than A120 was for larceny barrel proof. I think it's got a lot more depth to it. I really do. I think they did a really good job kind of fleshing out the nose on this one. Ramping up the sweet notes, but still encouraging like the the really bold, darker notes to kind of hold on to the rest uh, of the palate, or excuse me, of the the flavors that are coming through on the nose. Light citrus. There's a toffee note in there too. It's decadent, and it's it's much more decadent than the first Larceny Barrel Proof was, the A120. Clifton asks, did the A120 ever grow on you, or do you still not care for it? I think it's pretty good, but if this is better, I can't wait. The A120 did grow on me, um, for certain, but it never quite grabbed me in the way that I had hoped that it would. Um... It's not bad. It is not bad by any means. I think that it was just not as good as they had hoped it was going to be. And I think that's one of the reasons why I got a full bottle of the new Elijah Craig and a sample bottle of the new Larceny because they know how much I love the, the, the Elijah Craig and how much I preach about it. 
and then I gave a slightly less favorable review on the A120 Larceny. And they're like, well, let's um, back off a little bit. But to, to be fair, I mean, look, um, also Mike Meyer and Patrick Stark here are both here. Hello, gentlemen. But to be fair, I always give an honest review. I am fair and I don't cut corners. I mean, I, I am to the point about it, for good or ill. That's just how it is. And, um, yeah. I, Matt from ADHD said, if age longer, do you feel larceny barrel proof could be solid competition for WLW? I would like to see an older aged larceny barrel proof, definitely older than six to eight years blended. Um, 12 years, I think, would be great. I think it would be awesome. Brian Bernicke said, Terry is normally a pretty good judge of bourbon, but he was a bit off base on the Larceny Barrel Proof A120. And I'm, I'm, I'm okay with that. It just wasn't, um, it didn't hit me right. Maybe I had an early batch in the bottle. I don't, I don't know. I don't know. But it just was, just wasn't it for me. So, um, Joseph found a George T. Stag that Lisa Marie let him buy. Nice. Dad said, when was everyone's last haircut? Mine was February 25th. I think mine might have been early February. Maybe late January. I can't remember for sure. <laughs> it's bumping elbows emoji. I like that, Patrick. I like that. Clifton said, how can you not preach about our Lord and Savior, ECBP? Praise be. All right, I spent enough time uh, letting it open up in the glass. Let it taste. Now this, folks. This is what I wanted A120 to be. This is full of character. It's got life to it. It's constantly changing on the palate. The finish is just so, oh man. It turns into like a cherry pie on the finish where it starts out um, a little bit more kind of cordial on the, on the front end of the palate. <laughs> It hops into a darker note with some brown sugar in there, and that's when it kind of goes into the cherry pie. Not much of a hug, but doesn't feel like it needs it. Perry sent me a sample of the A120, and I liked it better than the Weller Foolproof he also sent. Did I send you A120? I forgot about that. <laughs> Good stuff. I'm glad you liked it better. Um, Brian said there's no beef, but LBBP, LBP A120 was sweet goodness. Patrick thought it was butts at first. <laughs> this is good. This is good stuff. Brian said, between you and Fred, I want the B520 so bad. To be fair, I have not watched Fred's review. Um, I, I'm, I'm, I'll be very upfront. I have not seen what Fred has said about this. I'll probably go back and watch his review uh, after I'm done so I can get a um, kind of compare notes. Um, Uh, Daniel Kerver said, uh, sounds like you're, you're trying to talk yourself back into a full bottle of the C920. That's not what I'm saying. I would be, I would be elated if that happened, but I'm just, I'm just happy to have samples of it at all to be able to try it. I mean, in a year where I didn't think I was going to get... <laughs> 
I was going to get much of anything. I mean, the fact that I get to taste these, period. It's great. I don't think I've had a second sip of this. Mmm. It's like straight up where there's originals up front. Also, I meant to say, before I read out your con comment, Daniel Kerber, hello, welcome to the chat. I don't think I've seen you in here before either. Lots of new faces in tonight. This is great. Not a whole lot of folks here, but I'm happy that you guys are here. I'm happy to see new faces too. You, this is awesome. Really, really happy to see you guys. Very, very cool. Um, Uh, when I finally sent the sip a while. Fair enough. Uh, Don said, curious that they chose the same naming convention between Larceny and ECBP. It gets confusing when someone says A120. Now I got to ask Larceny or Elijah Craig. I agree. Um, but I feel like it's just, it's easier this way. It's already established. I don't know. Uh, Fred was high on both. Cool. I trust Fred. <laughs> Patrick's got a spicy Russell's. Real nice. Real nice. <laughs> uh, Matt said Kerber's the man. Okay. Matt, if he's the man in your book, he's the man in my book. So, there's that. Uh, reminder to anybody who might have been coming in late, uh, Super Chats are available there just through PayPal, uh, Venmo, or Square. And the links for all of those are in the description uh, of the, the video right down, right down below. So you can check all that out. Okay. Um, final thoughts on the Larceny Barrel Proof A120. Um, definitely a step up. Um, from Fred was high. <laughs> Off-air conversation, but that's pretty funny. Um, B520 uh, for for Larceny Barrel Proof is definitely a huge step up uh, for the the Larceny Barrel Proof releases. Um, overall, probably would give it a 14 or 15 out of 20 uh, out on my normal scale. Um, you know, it, it's as far as mostly available barrel proof weeded bourbons go. This is just a steal. And I would love to try this up against Maker's Cast Strength. Because Maker's Cast Strength has been solid for sure. Um, it hasn't always been my favorite, but it's been really good. And I, I, I've, I've wanted to compare the two side by side. I don't have a bottle at the moment, um, or I would do that, uh, but I would be interested to see, um, I'm interested to see uh, what they would be like side by side. Um, Daniel said this is his first live. Interesting. Um, Joseph said, I thought Brian and Patrick and Trevor and me were the man. Of course you are. <laughs> uh, Matt said, Perry looks good in a watch. I think I'm too fat for a watch. First off, thank you. Second off, stop, stop talking that negative stuff about yourself, man. Stop that. Large new barrel proof. Uh, it has been way more accessible than ECBP, the A120 batch at least. Interesting. Well, I think that has something to do with the unprovenness in the market um, for a new product like this. I'm not saying that the the availability is the determining factor on the quality. I'm just saying that people might just have seen it and not known whether or not they should buy it. So I can kind of understand why it might be a little bit more available. People just aren't familiar with it. Um, that being said, B520, this is, it's a buy. 
It is a definite buy for me. 60 bucks? Heck yes. Heck yes. <laughs> Joseph Brazo said they still make pocket watches. They do. <laughs> oh, goodness. All right. Uh, I'm going to drink a little bit of regular Elijah Craig small batch as well. So I can prep for the B520 of Elijah Craig Barrel Proof. I don't want to go too heavy because I went too heavy on the Larceny small batch. I'm fine. I'm fine. <laughs> Uh, Don Nishida said Larceny Barrel Proof showed up at my local store 16 cases sold out in one afternoon $48 a bottle holy moly that's insane oh I missed my America I'll do it on the Elijah Craig Barrel Proof I'll do that and there's the pocket <laughs> there is what I've been saying forever um, that is what bourbon should smell like and it's fantastic Steven Sussman is here he says he's late per usual Steven all good buddy I know that half hour time change was a little weird so people are still getting used to it it's all good Daniel bought a Larceny A120 for 43 at Costco, hoping to find the B520 for the same. That is a heck of a steal there. Mm. Dude, even jumping from 122 to 94 proof, 94 proof still holds up a lot. Still has got a lot to offer. In the glass. Uh, Steven asked if I got a stuffy nose. I got a little bit of a stuff. <laughs> a little bit of a stuff. But I'll get over it. Papa Ritter. Grandpapa Ritter is tapping out. Uh, love to all and cheers. Cheers to you, Dad. Uh, Patrick still wears watches. I think my bourbon collection has finally eclipsed my watch collection. I love watches. Okay. Cleanse the glass. Cleanse the palate. My methods are never consistent. Um, but I guess that's what consi what is consistent. So it can yes. Dad said, text him after. What's wrong? Just kidding. I'm sure he just wants to talk. I'll text you afterwards. Don't worry. Anyway, Elijah Craig, B520. Oh, Dad, love you too. Sorry, I missed, I missed that. Also, I missed it again. Okay. Take two, America. There we go. Now all is right in the world. Now all is right. Here we go. And they've done it again. I'm just kidding. <laughs> Where A120 of the Elijah Craig Barrel Proof was a little bit off, a little bit left of center. Um, this definitely gets back to the more the the more recent editions of Elijah Craig Barrel Proof. Uh, 
It's much more similar to the releases that have been coming out over the past couple of years. That dark tannic note. And that caramel bomb. That lay underneath that like fruit bouquet. Mm. And there's a spice right in the middle there. What is that? I can't quite pick out what that spice is. Maybe it's clove, but it's got a it's got more richness to it. Clove is like sharp, right? It's got a sharpness to it. But it's it's a little bit rounder. Either way, th this is f a fantastic, fantastic nose. I would make a, a candle out of it. Hmm. The front of the palette is spectacular. Hands down, a, a very, very good palette. Um, the finish gets a little strange, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna touch on that when I go back for my second sip, and I don't wanna base everything on my first sip. Um, Tammy said there's now a balance in the force. Indeed. Uh, as Steven said, I don't know if it's the lighting, but that ECBP looks darker than some of the batches I have. It's pretty dang dark, dude. Really. Um, it ain't... <laughs> it ain't for the faint of heart. I'll tell you that much. Lil is here all the way from Brisbane, Australia. Hello, Lil. Um, Joseph said borderline peri poor. Indeed. Patrick said I'd buy that for a dollar. I'd buy it for two. Zeb Taylor said I just finished my C919 and holding on to a quarter bottle of the C917. You know, but the C918, that's the magic there, though. It's like you missed it by just that much. But still, both of those pours, excellent. Excellent bottles. Clifton said, Lil's just in time to party with us. Painkillers are making her sleepy, though. You know what, what, what cures sleepiness? Elijah Craig Barrel Proof. Oh, dude. It just keeps opening up. Keeps getting... Like... As it opens up, it becomes denser, and it becomes more interesting, and you just want, you want more of it. The legs on it, I don't know if you guys can see or not. Well, I had some legs. The legs are just insane. Daniel said I'd buy it for $3. What are we bidding on? Honestly, at this point, who's to say? Who's to say? I really have no idea. <laughs> um, Joseph stocked up on C918 last year. Four bottles. Lucky dog. Patrick's going to open his A120 and save his C19 as long as possible. I think you should open both at the same time and do a side-by-side. -side, but that's just me. That's just me. 
Lil uh, says, I wish we had a bottle here, uh, but they have one in Kentucky. I... <laughs> Clifton said, I get sleepy after one or two pours, then hyped after three. Amen. Amen to that. Trevor Wilson says, no, I win an ECBP. Uh, ADHD whiskey, I just found a bottle of B518 chilling on a shelf. Scoop that up. I would scoop that up like crazy. <laughs> Brian said, ECBP promotes sleepiness, not cures it. Look, man, what is one person's cure is another person's downfall into madness, which is what I say. That's what I say. That's the thing about it. Um, Clifton's going to be drinking some C918 tonight. I will join you with that then. I, I, will, I will join you with that. Indeed. Oh, Patrick was bidding on the candle. You would make a candle out of it. I'd buy a dollar candle that smelled like Elijah Craig Barrel Proof. People would not be happy with the way my home smelled, probably. People being my wife, but... <laughs> Steven wants a candle that smells like bacon and ECBP. Oh, that's it. That would be the money. I'm down for that. This is very good. Um... I don't think it's as good as A120, I will say. A120 kind of sit more in line with, I guess, what I've been enjoying recently, um, but cranked it up to a, a, a barrel-proof version of it. You know, I, I love, I love dusty pours, and a barrel-proof dusty it's just something that I wish I could experience. And I felt like A120 was as close as I could have come to that. Um, yes, it was off profile, but it was amazing. Just hands down amazing. That's all I can say. Um, th this is a very well-rounded Elijah Craig barrel proof, probably sitting in the 16, 16 and a half range for me. I think the finish is a little bit bitter. It's a little bit astringent. Um, and that's kind of the only downfall to it. Um, the finish is nice and long though. Um, it doesn't, it, it doesn't go anywhere quickly. It hangs with you. So nose in front of the palate are, are where I think this, this one really shines. Yeah, the finish is the only part that I don't I don't like that I don't like that much. But again, I still think this was um, this has been the the year of A one twenty. At the very least. Um, but we'll we'll see, man. We'll see. Um, dang, I'm Facebook notifications. I'm worn out with them. All right, let's catch up on the chat real quick. It's been a little bit since I've talked with you guys. Um, Patrick has a C918 open. You just don't want to drink it all. That is fair. That is totally fair. Uh, Don said, my Whole Foods, I uh, had stocked ECBP C919 in the wrong area. $31.99 a bottle. And then they said it was on the wrong shelf. <sighs> Throw an F in the chat for Don's potential. Uh, purchase that couldn't have happened. Uh, Brian said, where, where did that comment go? I once had 10 bottles of C9, C918 and now have four. It makes me anxious. Fair enough. Clifton only has three left. Fair enough. 
Um, Don said, I'm hoping karma pays me back sometime down the road. Fair enough. Matt from ADHD Whiskey said, how am I supposed to both edit a video and hide the fact that I'm shmammered from my wife at this stage of the game? She's wide awake and the computer is in sleep mode. I'm in great trouble. And Joseph suggested foot rubs. Case closed. Um, <laughs> Matt said, I just can't exhale. That's funny. <laughs> Audio died there for a second. Ah, sorry about that. I guess it's all good. Is it? Is it good now? It, lo it's lo it looks good on my end. I'm seeing everything's working. I apologize if the audio did go out. Sorry about that. Um, Joseph is misbehaving in the chat, but that's okay because what are we here to do if not misbehave? Have fun. You know what? Um, we still got a little bit. How would you guys think about a, um, a quick review of another new product that uh, most people actually don't know I have? Um, Actually, you know what? You do know if you listen to this week's episode. Um, I haven't, I haven't, of course, reviewed this yet. Let me clean this glass out. Yeah, large new barrel proof B five twenty. That's a good whiskey. That is good stuff. <laughs> So the other day, I, I swung by Liquor Barn because I was like, I may as well. And um, they had the, no, it's not Rare Breed Rye. Um, I would love to, I would love to find the Rare Breed Rye. I also want to get the Wild Turkey Master's Key Bottom and Bond, but here we are. Okay. I picked up the uh, Bullet Blender Select as well. It's a hundred proof. It's a blend of three of their whiskeys. Um, I guess three of their mash bills. Uh, they've got the Four Roses model going. I guess it's the only way that they could have produced their product after um, they wanted to move away uh, from sourcing their whiskey. So I guess once they started distilling, um, they were like, well, the only way we can achieve this flavor profile is by adopting, uh, the same practices. So bullet blenders select hundred proof. Have a little bit of this, uh, do kind of an off the cuff review. Uh, before we hop over to Clifton's birthday celebration, uh, stream. Uh, over on his channel. Trev Wilson, would you do me a huge favor? Would you drop me a, um, would you drop everybody a link uh, for the, for Clifton's stream, please, in the chat, so everybody can hop over there. Uh, Trev Wilson said, when is the Rare Breed Riot even supposed to come out? No idea. No idea. Uh, Joseph said, boycott bullet. It's a conversation for a different time, but yes. The only reason I bought this was because I wanted to review it. That's all I'm saying. That's it. Um, there we go. Donnie dropped the link for, for Clifton's stream for his birthday celebration. Perfect. So we'll see you guys over there too in about 11 minutes. Automatically, there's like a peanut butter note. <sighs> Sorry for the stuff he knows. Delayed with virus. It's okay. Also, everybody, say hello to Tark 
from Elixir Spirits in the chat. I miss you to death, dude. I I am so ready to get down to Tennessee. Come see my friends down there. You, the podcast, the dad's drinking bourbon, everybody that that is down there. I miss I miss you guys so much. I I just freaking miss my, my drinking buddies. I as much as I don't mind, you know, hanging out and having a couple pours on my own, I just miss miss sharing. I miss sharing. <clears throat> Clifton's trying to eat his birthday dinner quickly. Seriously, there it's it's very pleasant up front. Peanut it, it is like a peanut butter cookie on the nose. Let me let me just in case I'm missing something. Delicious. At least on the nose. Mm. Starts out with a really strong cherry note. And it rolls into the, the peanut butter cookie note uh, that I was getting on the nose. And then kind of finishes with a grapey barrel note. Um, kind of kind of goes a little bit cough medicine-y. Um, uh, which I'm not super over the moon about. But let me, let me take another sip of water. Um, Okay. Finishes definitely better on the second sip. Um, it does not lean nearly as much towards that uh, um, that medicinal note that I was getting. I like it a lot. I really, I think this is a a very good product. Um, I, I'm a, I'm interested to see how this is going to place uh, in my top ten for the year. Uh, I'm not sure exactly how that's going to play out just yet. Um, but I, I think that this, um, this is not bad. Really, really not bad. Um, by any means. So yeah. So I, uh, let's, let's go ahead and, and wrap things up. Oh, uh, if I were going to give this a score, probably about a 13 or 14, uh, maybe not that high, maybe like a 12 and a half. 12 and a half to 13, something like that. Um, anyway, let's go ahead and wrap this up. I, uh, if you have been watching on the replay, thank you so much for checking it out. Uh, do not forget to give a like, a, uh, subscribe, comment, share with your friends, family, people who drink whiskey, all that good stuff. Uh, if you're not listening to the podcast, of course, uh, you can find this is my room podcast anywhere. Uh, that you find quality podcasts. Uh, you can leave a five-star rate and review. You can become a patron of the show at patreon.com slash my bourbon podcast for as little as a dollar a month. We really would appreciate it. Keeps the lights on, keeps me going, allows me to, to buy bottles of whiskey. So <laughs> thank you all so much for being here. As always, I will see you next week. But until then, I'm Perry, and this is my bourbon podcast live. See you guys very, very soon over on Clifton Stream. Bye-bye.